Hello, we're really excited to be here to present to you about research in the real world with students and agencies working together. So I'm Cooper Conway. I am a recent graduate from the social work program at Utah State, and I am currently waiting to hear back from grad school at the University of Reno, Nevada. Um, I'm Caitlin Robertson. I'm almost a recent, a recent graduate, uh, undergraduate from the social work program at Utah State, um, the regional program. Uh, right now I'm working at UWC on the link line, the Utah Domestic Violence Coalition, and then I'm also working at New Hope Crisis Center as a Justice Court Advocate for Box Elder County. I'm Brian Sessions. I recently graduated from Utah State with my bachelor's as well in social work. I am in the process of being hired with Bear River Mental Health as part of the Mobile Crisis Outreach Team, and I'm excited for the opportunity to begin my career in social work. And my name is Wanda Jump Norman, and I'm a faculty member in social work at USU. So I teach research methods, and I have students in up to six locations, Brigham City, Moab, Blanding, Price, Tuila and Roosevelt slash Vernal. Um, students might be in both locations at that site. I typically have between 25 to 32 students and I, I teach it through the IVC system or online, one of those two methodologies. And my problem is I really wanted to engage students in the research process because what happens so often is students are just like, especially social work students, are not very excited to take research methods because social work students are doers and they want to be out doing something, actively working with clients, working with people to make things better, and they don't always see the link to research. I also had a desire to partner with agencies so that students could begin developing stronger relationships with the agencies. And I don't personally know the agency people at each of those locations. So that is a bit of a challenge. I have students for two semesters, which is a great advantage because I get to have them through the research writing proposal stage and then I also get to have them the following semester where there could be the option to implement a research proposal. And that's exactly what I wondered, is whether or not it was possible for me to supervise students' research from Brigham City when I had students as far away as Blanding. And I worried a little bit about the risk to the university if something went awry. So we got to be the guinea pigs in this process. We got to be the first ones to test this out. Um, we started by determining our topic, which the only parameters we were given was it had to be trauma related, which was a huge array of options that we could, we could go for. Um, once we decided on our topic, we contacted our agency um, or multiple agencies around the, the valley, and then we wound up doing a much bigger research project than we had originally planned on. So what we, what we had done is we decided to do burnout and compassion fatigue with hospice workers. So we decided to go with one agency who then told another agency, and then we had Northern Utah, Southern Idaho as our, our participants in our research um, project. So when we just, when we discussed the assignment and possible research topics, um, again, we, we kind of threw some things back and forth, a lot of different options, but we wound up just going with this one. Um, I, I presented this to my team that is here with me today, um, just because I know that compassion fatigue is huge in, in healthcare and taking care of people who take care of others is often forgotten. And so I thought that would be a good topic for us to hit. Um, so we partnered with our agencies. We, we had to be always in contact with a bunch of different agencies. It wound up going really well. Um, 
and we had to constantly make sure that we were obtaining their feedback and developing the collaboration, not only with one agency, but with an entire region. And throughout this process, we had to begin to develop our own proposal and ideas as to what we wanted this uh, research methods to look like and ultimately what we wanted to obtain from the parameters from our research foundations. And it was set up so that we could look more into how we can help these caretakers um, because as Cooper mentioned, they are um, part of a vulnerable population when they're so um, heavily driven to help others at a higher rate. And so we looked um, through the proposal and we obtained IRB approval um, with every single agency as well as through Utah State University. And then we began implementing the project and then we presented some of the results, preliminary results back to uh, the agencies and we didn't get a huge sample size. So a lot of what we were presenting wasn't super relevant I guess for lack of better words and the agencies responded well to what we presented that they saw that there was a need for better services to um, their workers and their team members all right for me you know there were a couple of just small pressures you know if you think about how this process goes because it is an iterative process where for students this is the first time that they are writing a proposal and so what i did is i would read each part of the proposal three times so they they did an outline of their literature review they did the literature review and draft and then they did the final proposal that had the literature review in it. And over the course of those three times, um, each time students, you know, their, their writing became a little bit closer to what it should be for a final proposal. And that really, that really mimics a true proposal writing team where we typically do write proposals a number of times. So for their method sections, you know, each of the sections within the methods, they also wrote those three times and kept refining them to get closer to what they really wanted over time. For me, I think that feedback to students is really important. And this is the first time that, that most students are writing a research proposal. And so being able to support the great things that they're doing as part of their writing and also support or I guess buffer or provide scaffolding for some of those pieces that maybe aren't quite as well written in the very beginning because it's the first time they're doing it. Um, and just to help them get it closer, um, you know, throughout the process. You know, keeping up with 10 research projects is a little bit of juggling but I have to say, it's so exciting to watch students who really get behind what they're doing and have a lot of energy about their proposal. They, they own it and they just really want to see the success. You know, there is some risk, but I've done this a couple of years now. And I have to say that students have just risen to the occasion and done amazing work, which I know you guys are already hearing from these three, Cooper, Brian, and Caitlin, who are superstars. Um, but I've also had other experiences like that from students who maybe aren't always as strong. Um, so at the university, we hope to make sure that we're using high impact practices as we're working with our students. And for me, you know, this class, I've made it into a writing intensive course so that students get to get lots of feedback on their writing skills. It's a collaborative assignment where they get to work with other students as well as with agencies 
to ensure a strong result at the very end. Um, students are engaging in undergraduate research and developing relationships with agencies who are in their own community in many of these rural communities throughout the state and they're likely to actually work at these agencies afterward and so this opportunity to do research ends up resulting in across the board strong relationships with their agency partners and a number of students actually go to those agencies for their practicum their senior year and one thing i might just say really quickly in a number of these more rural areas where my students are located there aren't necessarily a lot of financial resources that agencies have and so having students who are able to write a proposal to potentially bring in money to an agency is a strong need and then of course students are learning in the community and for me it's intense that the semester both semesters are really intense because it moves really fast from figuring out your topic to writing your literature review to then beginning to figure out what kind of methodology um, what kind of research design do you want to use because for every research question out there there are a number of ways that students could actually end up answering or you know designing their study um, it's real for the students at times it's frustrating um, but i have to say that overall i am just really proud of the students work and just happy to see how much they grow from september to april uh, it can be anxiety provoking at times for me because i'm just worried about the partnerships and if students are going to rise to the occasion at times and i have not been failed so far and it's a heavy workload So as Vonda has already stated, everybody, all the students go into the uh, you know, first research methods class very, very wary about research, not knowing, you know, what is it all going to entail, like we have to write an entire proposal, you know, um, but it has been like a, an amazing opportunity for our cohort, and I think that it's just an opportunity that so many social work students probably should be given. Um, we learned so much going through this process. The collaboration with the agencies um, is a huge one because um, even in our practicum and internships, some students don't get the opportunity to branch out that much and kind of like connect agencies together like that or work so much with other agencies depending on where you're placed. Um, so I felt like doing this research uh, class and doing this project actually showed me how to do the you know community outreach how to connect people how to go out there and kind of get information from other agencies now i work at new hope crisis center um, which is actually where i did my internship and after i did this research project it kind of all brought it all together because at new hope i have to do a lot of collaboration with other agencies and do a lot of um, things like that so the benefits, yes, definitely the strong relationships, and it's not just the relationships between agencies, but also students and professors, because I, I don't think I've taken any class where I've been able to build a relationship like that with any professor, um, because they have to be like your mentor helping you through the entire process, because this is like a real research project. We are the researchers, even though we're students, but <laughs> it's kind of really awesome because you go through the entire research process, um, go through the IRB, the nightmare, and um, both good and bad experiences, real world excitements and disappointments, um, and actually see what researchers do. And then we can make the decision, do I want to go into research? <laughs> you know, it's because um, that we definitely need people going into research and that kind of gives students that outlook on what research is outside of just the books and the, you know, academics. You actually are going out there and doing it, which is a huge opportunity for students super challenging um, there is a huge workload like <laughs> it is very very difficult to do research <laughs> I, 
but being in like a whole team and then having a mentor kind of walk you through the process is amazing. I might just add one benefit. Um, as I started to apply to grad school, I realized that some of the options that I was looking at, they looked for students who had research experience. That's not typical of every um, social work program. And I, like, I'm really, really glad that I was able to, to have this experience and have a mentor like Vonda so I could confidently write down my skills and my experience um, as I applied for grad school. Um, so, yeah, it's just to go along with the teamwork, um, you know, and as now as a social worker working at New Hope Crisis Center, I, I learned how I can, like, connect with people in that sort of way where we're all goal-oriented, working for a common, like, community goal. Um, so now I'm a lot better in the field in being able to do that just through doing this research project. Um, competence, definitely. Um, through doing this project because there are certain things that can be learned from the hands-on experience that can't be learned through just the textbook. Um, and then the frustrations, there was definitely the distance was a huge one because we are a regional cohort. Um, we had students up in Logan and then I lived down in Syracuse at the time. Um, and then we had to travel to Brigham for classes. And, and then, um, I mean, there was, I think towards the end, there was, you know, some uh, Zoom meetings and stuff going on, but uh, for the majority of this research project, it was mainly we had to tr actually travel to Brigham, and then not only for, that was for school, but we also had to travel to these agencies in order to get, get all of our um, information from them. So that was kind of a frustrating thing because we were regional, but also kind of a good thing too, because it kind of you could realize how like broad the sc scope of these agencies are, where their communities are located, and what you, uh, you can benefit from those. Um, agency availability, that was difficult. Um, people are very busy, especially people in hospice care. The hospice workers are very, very busy. So there was a frustration of being able to get the data. We were not able to get as much data as we originally intended to get, which is fine, because if we you know, were to down the road, get more funding and continue on with this uh, as like a grant, um, we could ultimately, I do think that we could have gotten more data to go along with this uh, and complete this. Um, the participation, uh, yeah, just like I said, it's just difficult to get people to answer to these um, surveys, but I think if we would have, you know, had more time, then we could have carried it out. So, um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> And then as far as topics go, um, within research, there's such a wide variety of topics that you can research. And so we obviously had that first one, stress and burnout and hospice workers, um, but we had several other cohort members who took different routes with uh, trauma and what they decided to do. And this wasn't just all of ours cohort, but it was also a wide variety of other students. And some of the big ones that we saw were the sexual assault assault survivors and that what their needs were and then looking at the mental health needs of some college students or just of college students in general and then barriers to latino parent involvement and then turnover in dcfs workers and then there's other research um, subjects out there that have been performed i know this past year they had one where they looked at um, the needs of the homeless population in Box Elder County. And so there's a lot of research being performed uh, throughout not just Northern Utah, but throughout the state of Utah, through Utah State University and the regional campuses that they use. And I, it's an awesome platform that we have and through an awesome professor that we're able to enable these research topics to further enhance education. Pay you later, Brian. So uh, we had some a lot of different outcomes. Obviously, uh, all of us have mentioned how confident we are in our abilities now. When we all went into this, we gave Vonda the look of deer in the headlights. We none of us really were on board with research or felt like that we could manage the pro 
uh, project that she was presenting that we were going to have to do over the two semesters. Um, it, you know, we, we knew going to research, obviously we were going to have to participate in some way or another, but we had no idea um, that we were going to have to come up with our own research idea and then pr and go through the whole entire process um, and then come out the other side uh, completely confident um, in our abilities, definitely, but it's changed just a lot more lighthearted about the subject. Um, thanks to our confidence, we have already, our group right here has already presented at one of the conference we presented at the Engaged Faculty Retreat, um, and that was in February. We have a no, another um, one of our cohorts who is presenting at a national conference. Uh, that was supposed to be the spring, I believe, in Texas. And then obviously all of us need to have good grant writing skills as social workers. Um, and I've taken the time to do that in my practicum. Um, when I went to my practicum, I did wind up in a hospice agency. I worked for um, CNS and they do something called Senior Wish. And one of our senior wishes was that someone could spend their, what is more than likely going to be their last Thanksgiving with their family. And I wrote a grant to make sure that they could get the proper care and transportation that they needed in order to go um, spend that, that day with their family. And that was an amazing experience. Um, another cohort that was before us, um, again, gained these grant writing skills and wrote a grant for what's now the backpack program. Um, I believe in all of Cache Valley, if I'm not mistaken, Blonda can correct me. Box Elder Middle School. Uh, oh, Box Elder Middle School, okay. That's what it was. Um, and that's still going on today. That, that program is still, is still running. And, um, you know, we, we students have been able to grow but I also feel like the community is benefiting from what we're doing as well. Um, obviously, you know, like like I said, the, the two examples that we just listed, but then also partnering with the school, these community agencies, you know, they, they rely on students um, and they can use students to write these grants and, and have their needs met. Thanks. Does anybody have any questions? We're so glad that you came today and you could email us at our email sphere if you need to. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right, I just want to get to the recording and stop the recording. Um, you guys are